Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And Verizon's fourth quarter earnings call just ended. I watched the entire earnings call. I sat through the Q&A. And overall, I would, I would, I mean, this is just my opinion. It was a very weak quarter for Verizon. So they were net positive on on uh, on the consumer side. They added about forty one thousand. Actually, they added forty one thousand wireless retail postpay net additions. So they were positive on the consumer side, but forty forty one thousand is relatively weak to what we already saw in the preliminary numbers of T Mobile, and what we're going to see from AT and T is going to be more way more than what Verizon is adding. On a quarterly basis. And the commentary that was left by Hans during the earnings call leads me to believe they are not going to grow at volume, not going to happen, not even close. I think if they can get to 100,000 a quarter at, uh, additions new to the company, they seem to be, that seems to be fine. And even if they can do 50, 60,000, that seems to be. The, the trajectory that they want to head in. So very interesting to see revenues up again, service revenue up, um, wireless revenue up. So that's that's the that's the positive takeaway from there. And then also another positive takeaway: they added two hundred and sixty two thousand fixed wireless access customers in the quarter, and I think that's. That's uh, likely a, the, the strongest positive and takeaway from the quarter. So some of the commentary that I wanted to share with you guys during the earnings call that leads me to believe that Verizon quarters are going to be relatively weak moving forward. They do not want to sacrifice financials over volume. So they are going to compete, but they're going to be. And he said this now, I'm quoting Hans. They're going to be less aggressive on device, and they are not going to change the cost structure. Those are your two indications that they're not going to grow anywhere near the volume of T-Mobile and AT&T. And the fact that they said they're going to be less aggressive on device promos, that's music to AT&T's ears. AT&T is going to continue their same strategy and take thousands of customers from Verizon. And T-Mobile, I know they have a security issue, but the, their their entire strategy, their business strategy, retail, uh, digital, it's it's just far better than anything that Verizon has. So T-Mobile is going to continue growing and taking share there too. They had a breach in 2021, August, 50 million. It didn't affect them one bit on their growth. Their guidance never changed. And I expect the same from this. Although I, I think the breach is bad, but I expect T-Mobile to, to, to hum along just nice. I don't think there's, there's going to be any change to their strategy, their guidance, nothing. Nothing will be affected by this. So some other things, Verizon's churn is 1.06% in the fourth quarter and wireless retail, retail postpaid phone churn is at, is at 0.86%. So customers are leaving Verizon. That is no secret. Uh, we've come to realize that over the last few quarters, they lost about 175,000 prepaid customers. So that's, I just can't, it's very hard to listen to the commentary and then to look at these numbers because Verizon, of course, sounds way more positive than these numbers are actually showing. They only added 41,000 customers on the postpaid side. They're losing customers on prepaid and postpaid. That's why the numbers were so low. And yet they seem fine with that strategy. I just don't know how much longer they can keep this up. They have to grow. They're not willing to budge on the financials. T-Mobile comes in cheaper. T-Mobile starting to add towers and rural footprints that Verizon has covered for years. Those customers are going to leave. Not all of them, of course, but there's going to be a, a... a nice chunk of customers that are going to leave the base to move to a competitor that's cheaper, that has you know potentially better perks that are more useful for them. That's going to happen. 
And I don't know how Verizon retains that customer or uh, or combats, you know, any type of growth that's that's leaving because they they're not competing aggressively. They said they would compete during the earnings call, but they said it would be less aggressive. So just very interesting and and and, and quite confusing. So if they he Han said if they put a promo out for the quarter and it doesn't work it, it it immediately gets pulled so if you see a promo that they that they add for the quarter and you think it's a pretty decent big promo and it gets pulled that means it didn't work he, he's he's letting us know that in the in, in the earnings call so be looking forward to that too so in the past where we've seen promos and they only last two to three weeks and they get pulled is because it didn't work according to him he said that at the earnings call so some other things to note, C-band build is going going great. Only thing that I, I am confused about as well, they did not change guidance. They are still guiding $250 million by twenty by the end of 2024. Uh, that's going to give T-Mobile more fuel, you know, publicly state that, they're, that they'll hit 300 by the end of the year in terms of that 5G leadership. Uh, don't know why they didn't pull that into 2023 in the guidance, but... I guess we'll see where they end up at the end of the year. And then the CapEx step down was announced today again officially. So they are guiding like 18 to 19 billion. And then there's another $1.7 billion left for the C band spend that they're going to finish this year. And then next year in 2024, they are going to step down to 17 billion. And then as, <coughs> excuse me, as a, uh, as it pertains to the revenue that they make now, they will have the lowest capital intensity in the um, over the last 10 years, they said. So they still expect to achieve a lot with that $17 billion, But just keep in mind, like I say, they, they operate a quite large wireline business that they have to invest in. They are building their own fiber. And... They are still constructing sites, new sites, small sites. So keep that in mind. So that that uh, capex is being divided up by quite a few sections across Verizon's vectors of growth. So very interesting quarter. Um, I still think it's it's a it's a relatively weak quarter. If if you want my honest opinion, um, could they have done better? Yes, they could have done way better. But they're not aggressive enough, in my opinion. The marketing is is isn't as great. They really don't display any of the perks that they have in the marketing. They just push that welcome plan, and and I don't think that's working for them. So I, I, I would expect that to get pulled as well. If it's not working, like he said, they pull the promos. So we'll talk about, about this more later. I'll do some more reading. We'll see what happens throughout the rest of this day. But let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. And I look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See y'all in the next one. Peace.